Hello and welcome back to Cooking with the Chef and the Bee. I'm your host, Chef Dan Williams, and today we're going to be doing a capsaicin extraction. So to start, you're going to need the chili of your choice. I'm using habaneros, but you can use any type of hot chili that you want. So I have 263 grams here, so let's get right on into it and I'll show you what to do. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is wash your peppers. Um, just rinse them off quickly under cold running water. You're going to need a cutting board, a sharp chef's knife, and another bowl to put these in. Now, I'm going to cut these in half because they will dry out faster. You can leave them whole if you want totally up to you. Also you want to make sure to leave the seeds in if you're going to be extracting the capsaicin and also whenever you're dealing with hot peppers wear gloves because you do not want to rub your face or your groin area afterward because you will not be feeling great. So just cut these in half like so and just put, pop them in that bowl. I'm leaving the stems and everything right on because I want to extract as much as we can. You could also choose just to buy already dried chilies, if you like. I like to make my life more difficult, so I'm doing it all from scratch. Also, if you grow chilies during the summertime, this is a great method to preserve them, the dehydrating part of this. Once you have the chilies all cut up, you're either going to use a food dehydrator or you can use your oven. If you use your oven, you're going to want to set it to about 140 degrees and put these on a baking sheet that has a cooling rack on top and just set these right on top of the cooling rack and then pop them in the oven. It'll take probably about 24 to 48 hours in the oven, maybe maybe less. I'm not 100% sure on that, but if you do use the oven, you're going to want to leave your oven open about two to six inches as these are drying out. So that's a long time to have your oven open and on. To do this, I would suggest just getting a food dehydrator. It's safer, it doesn't heat up your house a whole lot. If you're doing this in the summertime, your house is gonna be boiling if you have this oven on for two days. So, um, get a dehydrator. So, you're just gonna take the racks out and you're gonna put these downward and just line them up like so. Once you have one filled, you're just gonna pop it into the dehydrator now, if you have a big enough dehydrator, you can keep those whole. Uh, it'll take forever, though, to do that. And if you do keep them whole, be sure to just slit them in a few spots. Uh, that way it does dry out quicker and liquids can release and evaporate a lot faster. Once you have one tray done, just pull out your next tray and repeat the process. Uh, next step is to turn this on. Alright, so for this machine, you turn it on here. This should be flashing. I'm not sure if you can see that. Then you're going to hold down the select button and that will start flashing there. And we're gonna set this for 12 hours to start. 12 hours, push select again, it'll go to minutes. If you wanna add minutes, I don't. Uh, you're gonna wanna turn this to 125 degrees. I like to do it between 125 and 135 here because I'm pretty sure this thing is a little off in the temperature scale. Not a big deal, I just go about halfway in between 125 and 135 to get about 125. And then all you do is press start and you're good to go. The countdown begins as soon as it starts. All right, so I will be back with you guys in about 12 hours to check on these. At which point, we'll either, they'll either be completely dry and we'll weigh them out, and that way we can calculate how much yield we got from the original mouth, which will be kind of cool to see. Or, we'll put them in to go a little bit longer. If they need more time, it'll probably be about five to six more hours. So yeah, I will see you in about 12 hours. All right, so, we finally have the chilies dried, as you can see here. And now we're just gonna weigh these out, see how much the dry weight is, and we'll calculate what the yield was. All right, so the weight before we dried them was 263 grams. Just gonna pop that on there, tear it out, and change the mode to grams. And we're just gonna pop these in. Seeds and all. And we're left with 29.05 grams. So, big difference from the original weight. Our original yield was 263 grams. And our final yield, after dried, was 29.05 grams. So in order to calculate the yield percent, you're going to take the final yield and divide that by the original yield. So it would be 
29.05 grams divided by 263 grams, which will then equal 0.11, and then you're going to times that by 100 because we're getting a percentage, and that equals 11%. All right, so from a chef's perspective, 11% yield is not great uh, money-wise, but we're gonna create something pretty awesome here, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna grab all of the equipment that we're gonna need, and I will meet you back here at the table. All right, so as you can see behind me, we have an array of objects that we're gonna need for this extraction. So let's just get right on to the list. So you're gonna need Grain alcohol, or ethyl alcohol. In the state of Vermont, you need a permit in order to purchase this. I got a permit. It's a fr it's free. You don't need to pay anything to get the permit. And then the Department of Liquor Control in Vermont calls the liquor store that you request and tells them that you're all good to go. So you're gonna need that. Um, you're gonna need your peppers, vegetable oil, some Vaseline, two ring stands with clamps, you're gonna need a thousand milliliter round bottom flask. You're gonna need cotton balls, an aquarium or fountain pump. You're gonna need two things of tubing. You're gonna need some kind of hot plate. Uh, do not use open flames, that's not recommended at all, so just don't. You're gonna need a pot of some sort. Then you're gonna need a five gallon bucket filled about a third of the way with cold water. You're also gonna need a bag of ice. Uh, mine's in the freezer right now. Pull that out in a bit, and you're going to need a 500 milliliter beaker or something to measure with, and you're going to need some boiling chips. If you don't have boiling chips, just do what I do and break something that's unglazed, a ceramic or porcelain. And then finally, you're going to need your soft split extractor. I picked mine up on eBay years ago to do extractions. And all it really is, is a flask, a condenser like so, and the actual sock slit itself. I just washed this, that's why it's wet. Let's put this together and we'll go from there. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is take your vegetable oil and pour that into this pot here. Now, we're using this because when we put the ethanol and everything in this flask, ethanol boils very rapidly and very quickly, so this helps so that it boils more evenly and there's less chance of it bumping out of the flask and going up into the condenser itself. Uh, water boils too fast, it would evaporate, and whereas oil doesn't, and the oil's reusable. All right, now we're gonna measure out about 400 milliliters of grain alcohol. And we're gonna take it, and we're gonna pour it right into this flask. Try not to spill any like I just did. You could also use a funnel here, it would help. Quick note about grain alcohol or ethyl alcohol or ethanol. Do not drink this. It is 95% alcohol. Um, you can get higher percentages, like pure ethanol is 100% alcohol. Um, it's 190 proof. This stuff will seriously mess up your day. Uh, you will probably have the worst hangover of your life and there's a possibility that you'll go blind. So don't drink this. Use it for science and food. Alright, and you're gonna add in your boiling chips to the flask. And remember these make it so that they, so that the mixture boils more evenly and less chance of it going up into the actual extractor. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to lube up these joints. Now these are called ground glass joints. Each one has a different size as you can see here. This one says 2440. Uh, that's just the size of the joint. And as you can see here on the flask, it also says 2440. Now, the cool thing about this is when there's two joints that are the same, you can take them and you can fit them right into the other one. However, when you're doing extractions, there's always a chance that those, grounds, those um, ground joints will get stuck. 
and that's called a frozen joint. When that happens, it's very hard to remove it without actually breaking the glass. There are methods to do that, but let's just play it safe and rub a little Vaseline on the joint. So you just take a little bit of the Vaseline, take your joint, and you're just gonna rub it on the joint there and there. All right, so now that you have your joint greased up, we're gonna put this into the pot. All right, so you're gonna take your clamp here, open it up, you're gonna take your flask, pop that in the oil there, and you wanna make sure that it doesn't touch the bottom. So we need to, we're gonna have to raise this up a bit, but right now I'm just gonna clamp this down for a second, and we're gonna raise this up so it's just touching the oil. All right, so we got that in. Now you gotta take your joint that's greased up, and you're just gonna pop that in there and turn it as you do. And that will ensure that it's not gonna stick. And then we're just gonna pop this over here to help support this. All right, so now that you've got this part set up, you're gonna take some of your cotton balls, you're gonna open them up a bit like so, and you're just gonna pop them in there. Now, depending on the size of the socks extractor you have, this will be a little different for each one. Um, I'm just gonna put in three to start and just take something long enough to push it down. Take this guy, and we're just gonna push that down like so. Not too tightly though, that liquid can't get out. The idea behind putting the cotton balls is so that pieces of the pepper can't get through this little arm down here. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but there's a little arm that goes up and we don't want any particles getting in that and clogging. So, erring on the side of caution, I'm adding a few more cotton balls. All right, and the next thing we're gonna do is grind up our dried chilies. You're just gonna take all of your dried peppers, pop them in the mortar and pestle. You can also use a spice grinder if you want. I'm just opting to use a mortar and pestle. So you're just gonna crush those in there, like so. All right, so this is about good for me. You can go finer, of course. I'm opting to go a little bigger. So, we're gonna take this and pop it in the extractor. All right, as always, when you're handling peppers, I recommend gloving up. And you're just gonna take your dried chilies and throw them right in the top. And then you're just gonna take your tongs or whatever you're using to push things down again, and you're just gonna push that down lightly, making sure you're not compacting that cotton too much. And then, we're going to pop some more cotton on top. We're just gonna lightly tap that down as well. This is what the setup should look like in the sock slit extractor. Should have cotton, your material that you're extracting, and a little more cotton. So then you're gonna take some more alcohol, and you're just gonna do a quick wash to start the process going a little bit. So. I'm just going to measure out a hundred milliliters at a time, just so I know how much uh, ethanol I use total. And then you're just going to pour this in the top, and you're just going to start soaking the material. And you'll see it's starting to run down, collecting at the bottom. You can see the color changing down here. That's what we like to see. That means it's already starting to extract. So, what we wanna do, we wanna bring up the liquid to right about just under that level there. Let's put 200 more milliliters in this, and then we'll start the extraction. All right, as you can see, it started coming up this arm. You'll see that the color is a little darker than the original ethanol. See? All right, so now all that's left to do is put this on, grease this up just like you did with this joint, set it on top here, give it a little spin. All right, so that is the full setup for the Soxlet extraction. So now, 
The other thing you do is hook up the water source. So you take your five gallon bucket, half a wood water here. You're gonna put your aquarium pump in. Then you're gonna hook up one of the tubes to this part here. So you just screw it in like so. Make sure it's hooked well. And you're just gonna connect this tube to the bottom part of the condenser. And then we're gonna take the other hose that we have here and we're gonna connect it to this end like so. And then we're gonna pop that end into the bucket. And that will create a full recirculation so that we're not wasting any water whatsoever. This is also the time where you're gonna grab your bag of ice and you're gonna pop the whole thing right into this bucket. Okay. You want this water to be extremely cold because that aids in the condensing of the ethanol. Alright, so the only thing we have left to do is to turn the water on for the condenser and turn the heat source on so this can start. Alright, so you'll notice that the water fills up down here. And works its way up to the top. And as it approaches the top, you'll see it start to flow into the out tube. And that'll go down and work its way back into the water system. All right, then we just turn on the heat source. We're gonna start low because ethanol boils at 173 degrees Fahrenheit or about 78 degrees Celsius. So we just wanna, every once in a while, get a little thermometer reading on it, see where it's at and control the temperature then because there's no reason for this to get any hotter than 173 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so I just want to explain a little bit about what exactly is going to happen as this does its thing. So the first thing that is going to happen is we're going to see the ethanol begin to boil. As it boils, the vapors from the ethanol are going to climb up this side tube here, head up here, and start making its way up into this condenser. Once it hits this condenser, because this water is super cold, it's going to start condensing. The, the, the vapor is going to start condensing, which then is going to fall back down into this, into ethanol form, liquid form, um, and it's going to start making the extraction. And as it works its way down, this tube here is going to start filling up slowly, 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 and then all of a sudden it's going to release back into here and go down into the flask with the rest of the ethanol. Now this is kind of cool because unlike a normal distillation or extraction, this reuses the ethanol and continuously keeps it going throughout the whole thing. There's barely any waste. Obviously there's going to be a little waste because there's a vent up top, but nothing major, which is awesome. Because then after we do the extraction, we're going to distill the ethanol out of the extract and we'll have an almost pure capsaicin extract. Obviously there will be some other things in our extraction just because I don't have the capacity to extract certain uh, chemicals out, so it's going to be capsaicin and some other different chemicals from the pepper plant itself. So, as this goes and progresses, we will um, check in on it. I expect this will take anywhere between three and a half to five hours total to extract this. So yeah. I'll see you in a bit. All right, so we're just sticking a thermometer in here, monitoring how far it's getting. We're at 124 degrees Fahrenheit right now. You can start to see, I'm not sure if you can see on the camera, but I can see some vapors starting to form on the top part of this flask. That's a good sign. This right now is almost at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. The liquid inside, the ethanol inside the flask, is actually a colder temperature than the uh, oil itself, so that takes time for that to heat up inside. Once this starts to boil, we're going to take the temperature here and bring this down to about 173, 174 to keep this at a, continu uh, at a continual boil. All right, little bubbles are starting to form in the flask there. The oil is at 240 degrees about. We're going to just turn it down just a hair and wait until that comes to a boil. Any second now, it's going to start boiling pretty decently. All right, and it's at a boil. As you can see, those boiling stones keep it, at, keep it under control pretty well. So as you can see, vapors are starting to steam up through here, which is good. They're gonna start 
condensing up here. As you can see, there is some drippage coming off of the uh, spout coming from the condenser up top. That's dripping down onto this, and this will slowly start rising. And I'll, we'll come back when that happens. All right, as you can see, the ethanol is lining up pretty much perfectly with the ethanol in this tube that has all of the capsaicin in it. It's lined up perfectly. Now, in a few moments, this is going to go over the edge. As soon as this comes up to here, this will come up to here, and it'll go over the edge and go down into the flask. It's going to create a siphon and pull out all of pull out all of the liquid pretty much until about right here into the flask, and then it's going to recondense again and continue the cycle over and over. It's going to happen very quickly when it does happen. There it goes. And as you can see, it's going down into the flask. And into there. The boiling has almost has completely ceased and as you can see up top there, maybe you can't, it stopped dripping as well. Oh, it's dripping a little bit, but very slowly compared to what it was. So we need to get this back up to uh, temperature as soon as possible and continue this process. And it's starting to stop. Bubbles are coming out, and it's gonna start recondensing once more. All right, so you saw how this works. Uh, I'm gonna let this go for another three and a half hours, at which point we'll check on it, see if it needs more time. If it does, we'll let it go a little longer. Uh, if not, we'll move on to the next step. So I will see you in a bit. All right, so it's been three and a half hours. Let's take a look and see how it's doing. As you can see, the liquid in the arm tube here is still quite tinted, so we're going to let this go for a little bit longer. We're looking for this to be completely clear. Then we'll know that the extraction is done and we can go to the next step. Alright, so this is pretty much done. We're just going to turn it off and let it cool down and then we'll go on to the next step. Alright, so the extraction is complete. As you can see, this was what the ethanol looked like before. And this is what the ethanol looks like after the extraction. Uh, it's very red. So the next step is to distill out the ethyl alcohol and be left with the capsaicin. Uh, now, as I said earlier, this isn't going to be 100% pure, uh, just because I'm not doing this in a laboratory setting. I'm not, you know, I don't have all the sophisticated equipment to isolate just the capsaicin. So. Uh, this is going to be capsaicin, there'll be chlorophyll, there'll be a bunch of other uh, molecules in this uh, besides the capsaicin, but not going to harm you or anything, so not a big deal. Alright, so now I'm going to set up the distillation process and then I'll run through how that works, and then we'll just start distilling. Alright, so this setup is a little different than the Soxley extraction. Uh, as you can see, we are still using oil as the heat conductor. Uh, on the hot plate, we have the capsaicin extraction in the original flask with boiling chips in it to try to prevent all of it ending up in there all at once from boil over. Uh, we have a little distillation arm here, it comes up and over. Uh, as you can see, this here, I have tin foil underneath it and it's screwed on. Originally, normally you put a uh, thermometer in there, we don't need that, so I just screwed it on with that so nothing escapes. Then down here, we have the, the uh, distillation column. So it works the same way as the top of the Soxley extractor did. Water is gonna, cold water is gonna come in through here, come up here, and come back down into the bucket to keep recirculating the water. Uh, the cold condenses the steam from the capsaicin extraction, and it will drip down here, it'll be pretty much pure ethanol by the time it comes down here and into the flask. Now I have a uh, little pie dish underneath here just in case something bad happens where everything pours in at once because of boil over. Alright, so once again you're going to want to make sure you have your bucket of wa cold water, put your ice in there, and we'll plug it in and get started.
All right, so I'm gonna let this come up to temperature. Uh, once it starts doing its thing, I'll bring you back and we'll have a peek and I'll show you how it's, how it's working. All right, so it just began to boil. The steam is starting to work its way up into the distillation arm and go into the distillation column. And as you can see over here, the ethanol has started to come out and it is dripping very quickly. All right, so with how fast this is distilling, uh, this is not gonna take long, maybe 45 minutes to an hour max, maybe a little bit more, I don't know, but I think it's gonna go quite fast. So yeah, we'll come back uh, when this is almost done. Okay, so this is pretty close to being done. Uh, I'm gonna stop the distillation now because this stuff gets really, really gloopy and um, hard to work with once there's no more ethanol in it. So, while there's still a little bit of ethanol left in there, I'm gonna take it out and we're gonna transfer it, transfer it to another container and we'll go from there. As you can see, there's this red oily substance coating when I shake it. That is the capsaicin oil. So, we're gonna empty this in into this container here. We're gonna let it drip for a bit to get it all out. Then we're just gonna let it set for the ethanol that's in here to evaporate and then we're done. Before I did that, I completely forgot. Definitely wear gloves when you're dealing with this because the capsaicin is highly concentrated. You get it on your skin, it's gonna burn your skin. You rub your face, you rub your genitals, it's not gonna be a great day for you. So wear gloves, don't be like me. Um, I'm gonna put gloves on now to finish this. Uh, I didn't get any on my hands, so that's a positive. It just hit me as I was pouring it. So make sure you wear gloves if you do this. Okay, now that my gloves are back on, uh, we're just first gonna fish out the boiling chips that were in here. We're gonna lose a little bit of oil on here, but that's not a big deal to me. And we're gonna just turn this upside down and let it drip out. Oh, just lost some. You can definitely smell the peppers. It's not unpleasant, so that's, that's a positive. We're just gonna let that drip for a little bit and we'll come back. All right, so the ethanol has completely evaporated out of this. Not sure if you can tell, but it's quite goopy. So the easiest way to get this out is gonna be with a syringe, I think. So glove up. Uh, I have a little test tube with a stopper here. I'm just gonna keep it in here. I don't have any uh, little vials, so this will work just as well. So if you're using a syringe, be careful if you have a needle on it, I do, uh, just because it's going to be easier to suck it up. Uh, so just be careful not to poke yourself. Alright, so we'll just... Alright, it seems like I'm having a little difficulty because this is so goopy to actually get anything in the syringe. Uh, getting very small amounts at a time, not really how I want to do this. So I'm thinking I'm just going to take the needle off and be sure to cap your needle if you're using a needle uh, just so you don't poke yourself as I said earlier. I'm just going to try it this way to see if this works without the needle on it. Not really. <laughs> oh, this is not going to be fun. This is almost the consistency of, like, Elmer's glue. Um, very thick. I think we're gonna pretty much say this is good. Okay, so we're just gonna set this aside for a minute. I wanna talk about the ethanol that we recovered from the distillation after the extraction. Uh, so we used 800 milliliters total of the grain alcohol. This is what we recovered from the distillation, so I'm just going to pour it in here. I know we have over 500 milliliters. Uh, I'm just going to pour it in here to get a little bit more accurate 
reading to see how much we lost. Okay, so we have almost 600 milliliters. So we lost a little over 200 milliliters of ethanol. Not quite sure where, but not a huge deal. We recovered quite a lot of it, which is nice because we can just reuse it. So, yeah. All right, so um, I'm sure most of you want to see me taste this. So, I'll taste it. I'm gonna put gloves back on though, just in case. Oh. So, uh, before I taste it, this is about a five milliliter test tube here and it filled it almost to the top. So we ended up with a little under five milliliters of the capsaicin extract. Better than I thought it would be, honestly, because I didn't think I had a lot of peppers to make this much. This will last years. Like, I really don't think I'm gonna be using much of this ever. I just wanted to do this as a fun little experiment. I may make some candies with this, possibly. Uh, I'll let you know if that ends up happening. But anyway, let's uh, give this a try. So, I have a toothpick here, and I'm just gonna dip it right in just a little tiny bit. Literally, that's probably too much. I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah, that, that, that's quite a lot, but we're gonna roll with it anyway. <sighs> All right, here we go. So the heat instantly coats your entire mouth as soon as you go to swallow. Um, there is absolutely no flavor whatsoever. Maybe a little bit of pepper flavor, but it's not uh, not much. Uh, it is v pretty spicy. Back of my throat's pretty much on fire right now. I can feel my face um, getting warm and starting to like prickle up. Not as spicy as I thought it would be. Still very spicy though. Not the spiciest thing I've ever put in my mouth. I'm actually pleasantly surprised at how I don't want to say mild, because it's not mild, but I'm surprised it's not as spicy as I thought it would be. Uh, I know I only use habaneros, I didn't use ghost chilies or um, Cal Cal uh, Carolina Reapers or any of that, but uh, still pretty spicy. I, I would actually probably use this if I wanted to just bump up the spice a little bit. I do use habaneros when I make jerk seasoning, or uh, a jerk rub. And this wouldn't be bad to add it if you wanted a little bit... <clears throat> Sorry, I'm having a hard time talking. Um, this wouldn't be a bad thing to add to the jerk uh, rub that I have if you want it just a little spicier. Um, but yeah, all in all, that was not bad and it was fun to make. <clears throat> so, as always, thank you for watching. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Head over to our website, www.chefnb.com. Once again, that's www.chefnb.com. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whew, it's spicy now. It's starting to... Wow. It's starting to really burn a little bit. Over on the website, you can learn a little bit about what the Chef and the Bee is all about, how you can get involved, and how to make the restaurant actually happen. Uh, you can also go to our shop over there. And we have tons of merch. Uh, as you can see, I'm wearing one of the t-shirts we offer. I'm wearing a hat we offer. We offer tote bags. We offer coffee mugs. Uh, we have uh, some of our food products over there for sale, such as the Garni, which is a fermented garlic honey, which, which you can watch in one of my previous videos on how we made it. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.